In this video, we will discuss using a logical approach for defining operation of a perfusion run using the following steps. Knowledge space, design space, control space. In the knowledge space, you define your process goals and any knowledge about your materials you must use in the process. This begins by determining how much product and what level of quality is needed, as well as known cell line behavior and requirements. A first step is to establish how many kilograms of product are needed annually, as well as how much product is needed for clinical trials and how soon. Within the product, does it have special restrictions such as being cytotoxic or unstable? Are there known quality profile targets such as charge variants, glycosylation, fragmentation or aggregation? Ideally, this will be related to an easily monitored parameter such as a target cell viability. For the cell line, it is important to understand the scaling potential. For example, can the cell line handle stresses such as agitation and gassing? Also, what level of cell-specific productivity can the cell line achieve, and how stable is the production? The target variable cell density, or VCD, may be estimated for the selected production reactor volume based on the annual production needs, as well as the cell-specific productivity and number of runs that can be completed annually. It will also be important to know approximately what medium exchange rate will be necessary to support your process. This is effectively estimated by knowing your target VCD and cell-specific perfusion rate, or CSPR. There are different methods to determine CSPR, such as iterative flask methods or a direct bioreactor method analysis of the early stage of a perfusion run, as shown in this graph. Here, the cell behavior is monitored for a sudden drop in growth rate identifying the possible limit of medium exchange necessary to support log growth of the cell culture at the VCD where the drop occurs. This direct method analysis of the early stage of a perfusion run, in addition to providing a CSPR estimate, may shed light on expected cell line behavior such as peak VCD and productivity at high VCD. In the design space, you define necessary elements and possible operating range to support your knowledge space cell line and process goals, such as product quality and quantity. This is done by determining the best process type to match the production needs identified in the knowledge space. Once that is done, the equipment necessary to support the chosen process has to be selected. Finally, once the equipment is selected, the practical operating limits for the process can be used to build the design space. To determine the process type, first establish which process is the best fit based upon known information about the cell line, product, and facility as gleaned in the knowledge space work. For example, it may be necessary to produce an unstable product, making it beneficial to continuously remove product. If the clone being used demonstrates highly stable productivity, then this scenario would be an obvious best fit for a continuous perfusion process, barring any other considerations or restrictions. Here, either seed train approach is acceptable. However, an intensified seed train may allow the production reactor to start at a greatly improved seeding density. If there's a need to use existing equipment, such as large production reactors, a classic process type may be the best choice. However, an intensified seed train may still be a good pairing option to improve the overall process. After selecting a process type, equipment should be chosen to match the process type, the cell line needs, and the annual production output required. Select a production reactor with an operating volume based on annual production needs and expected cell line productivity established in the knowledge space. The production reactor would also have to support the process selection requirements. Perfusion requires compatibility with a cell retention device and a paired controller to meet higher gas flow rates and additional operating hurdles. The equipment operating limits for the process can now be used to outline the design space. This is frequently determined by the capabilities of the production reactor and paired controller, as they are often the most limiting factors. The practical operating range for necessary support of the process and knowledge space requirements must now be defined. Final operating volume will be constrained such that annual tighter requirements are met. Mixing speed will be constrained to provide sufficient bulk mixing and mass transfer, or KLA. 
it will also need to limit the shear rate based on what the cell line can tolerate. Oxygen gas flow rate will need to be low enough to handle initial inoculation, but also support KLA at peak cell density. Taking these actions with the various operating parameters will establish the design space. For the control space, we will evaluate operating parameters from the design space by linking their effect to critical quality attributes. This confirms critical operating parameters and then allows successive optimization. First, look at the operating parameters. These may include direct items such as pH and steady state cell density, scaling items such as operating volume and mixing speed, or various other parameters. After looking at operating parameters, consider which critical quality attributes are important. These are typically oriented around the amount and quality of product generated using attributes such as titer, glycosylation, aggregation, or charge species. Next, establish a design of experiment, or DOE, to model the effects that the suspected critical operating parameters may have on the critical quality attributes to determine their relationship. This will help you prioritize which of your operating parameters are most critical to your process model. The last step is to verify your model and then optimize it through an iterative process. Contact your sales representative or get more information at thermofisher.com slash perfusion.